coaches, consultants, and all these guys that offer to help you with any and all services for your business. And the reason that I feel so qualified to do this is because I have gotten the short end of the stick with some gurus and I've had amazing success with other coaches and consultants. So we're going to break down what this actually looks like and show you exactly the steps. This way you guys can make your own decisions and not only make your own decisions, but make sure that you work with reputable people that are going to do the right thing and put your business in a position to succeed. All right. And so, save money and save lots of money. Yes. And headache. Before we get into that, I had a coach or consultant that helped me tremendously, realized my business was very good. I made a program with him. He then decided to, instead of doing the right thing and working with me, he decided to take the program, compete with me, and basically use my stuff against me and kick me out of all of his groups. And it's not just me. He's done that with a bunch of people. And I'm not here just to talk about him, but he is one of the worst actors. No doubt he's one of the worst. And it's story after story. I want you guys to be able to avoid these situations. All right. Keith, what would you say the first thing is to look at? Tax reports. Oh, yeah. Well, you'll never get those. Uh, but Keith is right. Okay. I actually would love it. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Show me the money. Could, think about this. If we could make a Facebook or any social media where you had to, every post you made, giving somebody else advice, they would get to see your personal financial statement, your credit score, and all the relevant info. All right, because it would be really yeah. easy to learn who to take advice from and who to yeah. avoid. But since and we can't any, speak, anyone with any wealth has a personal financial statement at the touch of a button, yes, it's always available. Correct. So if they hit you with that, I need to. I got so much shit. I need to go put it together. They ain't yeah. got no statement. I don't think most coaches or consultants would provide that. Okay, I'll be real. I would not I provide my own one because most people couldn't even read it. And two, there's a lot of my sense of information on there. So if anyone's willing to give you a tax return, I think that's an amazing first step in building that relationship. <laughs> okay. But I don't think that's going to happen. It's not so, happening. But yeah. So no, let's talk I mean, about real things. Listen, dude, the, uh, at the easiest component to figure this thing out is like, where's your track record and what you're teaching me to do. So the ones who, went to prison for the most notorious bullshit crimes in America who come out saying that they were in the worst prisons in America and they've now become successful. Yeah. What's your track record? The only thing you're doing is selling a story. I need to see some shit on that. So then we got to see numbers, right? That's the only way you can validate to me you're successful. Right. Then you got guys who build shit, build empires and real estate portfolios and fucking fortune 500 companies. And yeah, there's a success story and proof is in the pudding. Yep. Yeah, so that, the very first thing is it, most, most of these entrepreneurs that get targeted are the one to $5 million range who are yes. looking for the easy fix. I need something and they get sold a story. Mm -hmm. They never ask for proof. Mm -hmm. uh, marketing companies are the fucking worst. Yes. Pay but, me a lot of money for 90 days so that I can prove to you that we got you a couple of leads. Mm -hmm. And you end up firing them in 90 days and losing 20 G's. I agree with that. There's too. no, you, you got to get value and proof out of this before you give away your money. Yeah. So what is that coach's track record? What have they built in the past? And is it similar to something you are trying to build? Okay. And if it's someone that just coaches, right? They're a life coach, a business coach, a, a hardcore coach, whatever kind of coach it is. Did they build a business in the past that is, different than coaching. Like I have two good friends. I got Mike Claudio, Tony Watley. Both of them have built successful businesses before they were coaches. The only type of coaching and consulting I do is related to business growth and business financing, because guess what? That is my wheelhouse. And that's all I've done for the past 15 years. Those things line up. It's these random coaches that get a big online following. Sometimes they're paid following. Sometimes they aren't. Okay, it doesn't make a difference. They just use the buzz and they're following and they prey on them, right? I'm not saying they're not going to help you. They're not going to try. But the long term, they will not be a net positive for your business. 
That's just, those are just the facts. Here's another thing. What kind of systems have they built? Are you able to try their product? Are you able to try their service? Do you know other people that have been through it and are done and had positive experiences? Also, who have they worked with that had negative experiences? And did they try to make that right? Okay. I'm okay with people making mistakes. I may mess up all the time. I will also go out of my way to make something right if I know I messed it up. So these gurus, what have they done? Have you spoken to people, right? Keith, what are some other things you would look at? Yeah, track records are my go-to, but uh, I always look for reviews as well. Yep. Who, who, who else would be coached and then who, how I need to be introduced to them. I want to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I ask for live referrals and references so that I can – and not only – who they provide, but then I ask for someone in my wheelhouse. Who have you coached in my wheelhouse? If it's not the same. Yep. Because I need to talk to that person. And that's typically someone they haven't really thought to connect you with anyway. So it's oh shit. Now I gotta search. And those are my things. I stay here's what I don't do. I don't go off of TikTok and Instagram and, and social media. Clickbait. Don't operate on half the bullshit lies that are in all industries in that segment. Tax well, is a cap. Here's a good one I just found. What if you cross-reference their social media pages? And I understand LinkedIn is a social platform, but LinkedIn has timestamps and recommendations, right? So if you have a coach that's supposed to help you grow and scale, and then you go check their LinkedIn and it's just things on, you know, something other than that, okay? You know that they're not a fit. I'm going to give you one other one. If they are teaching you about leadership or business, Okay, and they want to help you grow. How stable is their team? Okay, do they have a revolving door of people working for them, or do they have a revolving door of people coming in and out, both clients and employees? Yeah, because that is a leading indicator. If so, like I will tell you, I've had my team can right now, I have people on my team since the almost the very beginning. Okay. I, I have two people that have came to two different companies with me. Okay. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm telling you, it shows stability and longevity. All right? right. Do these guys have that? Do they have anyone that's been around that long? Okay. And then if they don't, a warning sign, because they don't treat people the right way. They're not great leaders themselves. They're going to grow your business and help you be a better leader. Meanwhile, they can't even lead their own people. <laughs> All right. Let's call a spade a spade. That's legitimately what it is. Yeah, the other thing I look at is their family dynamic. How, how are they outside of business? Yeah, that's that's the real you. That's how I that's how I gauge the real person. Yeah, you know, if their uh, wife's always talking shit about them, or if they're always drunk and fucking around on weekends, then kind of yeah. what kind of leader can you be? <laughs> yes, I, I agree with that hundred percent. I'll tell you another yeah. one. And, and here's why it matters, all right? I'm not going to name the group. I'd like to. I want to. But I there was a time, let's say between 2018 and up to 2021, 2022, where there was a bunch of investments that came from one group, okay, that I was in. I went in them, and I probably put 300, 400,000 into these investments. All of these investments went tits up, Okay. That money is gone. I'm tied up in suing people. All right. Now, why did this happen? Because when the leader is rotten and the group is rotten, it attracts more rotten people. Okay. So there's other rotten influencers. And by the way, guys, be very careful of these influencers. Okay. Because we're seeing a couple of these groups turn on each other right now. Because they all got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. (laughs) And guess what? Most of these guys that have been flashing all of this supposed wealth seems like they're now broke or going broke or on the way to several lawsuits, right? And the reason I'm mentioning this is because we care so much about small business that right. I know and an extra, tw- if you guys drop 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand on something that doesn't work, okay? That can set you back. And even worse, if you get in the wrong investments like I did, or you're around the wrong people, they can do way more damage than just the money it costs you. It could cost your reputation. It could cost you investment dollars. It will 100% cost your reputation because when you get 
push out or leave that group, that person turns on you or people yeah. turn on you. You're no longer associated with the, what really they fucking come down to is a cult atmosphere. Yes. Right? You don't go there to learn business shit anymore. You go there to hang out with your buddies. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. The smart ones hang out with your buddies and run game at the same time. But the reality is you go there, you spend a shit ton of money, you don't implement a fucking thing, you get pushed out, and then any business you picked up while in there typically gets bamboozled away pretty quick. It's a lot of money on the line if you're not careful. Absolutely. And then I'd also think about this. Look back years and years. See what conflicts they've had. See what challenges they had and how did they handle them. Okay? Most people that are good people will handle their adversity in private or do the right thing as much as they can. And I can tell you there's a lot of these groups and gurus that do not do that. Also, what is the deliverables? Let's think about this because some of these agreements that you guys signed to stay in, I don't think you've even read them, but if you're hiring a coach or consultant, what are their deliverables and what holds them accountable in that agreement? Give you an example. Right now I'm going through it because I have a contractor that has been ripping apart my office. It was supposed to be done in six weeks. We're going on month three. Not only do I have to deal with the noise, I've had to cancel two of my own events, right? There's damages there. When this guy is done, I'm going to destroy him. If I don't lose my patience and destroy him now. But if he was a coach or a consultant, he'd be like, hey, I gave you everything you needed. needed. And their version of that, if it was a contractor, would be, hey, I dropped off half the materials that you need to rebuild the house. Do it yourself. And uh, by the way, things are missing. You have to figure it out. So what are their deliverables? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, would you send a contract that says, I'm not going to do shit for you? Because that's what you're signing most of the time. Yeah. And here's the thing. I think for every three or four crappy coaches, there's probably a really good one or two consultants out there that will really help you. Okay. I've been part of some great groups. Like Arte's helped me a ton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that you want to work with that have real results, real reviews, real testimonials, and they've built things. All right. How are they getting to you? Did someone refer you? Did you see an ad? Have you watched them for a while? And I would be very cautious of people that are advertising, sending out messages related to wealth and all the assets they have, because that is probably the number one fake thing. I, someone told me this weekend, I do a terrible job on social media uh, and I can't argue with them. I don't show any part of my life, dude. All I do is it's business. It's information. It's helping people, right? They don't see the TRX. They don't see the assets. They don't see the boat. Keith, have you, no one sees that stuff, right? I keep that stuff very private because I don't want to be bothered and it's no one's business what I have. Okay. Now other people use those assets to attract clients saying, Hey, look what I built. Look at all these things I have. Well, motherfucker, your shit's rented. Okay. Your shit's <laughs> fucking leased. All right. You borrowed your buddy's car, fucking come over and take pictures in front of a house that isn't yours. Show me one more motherfucking jet picture that you fucking leased. Okay. <laughs> that hold on even better. You have the balls to say, Oh, I'm going, I'm taking all these people on my jet. Motherfucker, you had them pay for your jet, okay? Right. They paid for the plane ride just to hang out with you. And you know how Mastermind I know Mastermind in the sky. Yeah, I was a dumb fuck who did that as well. Yeah, you were. Okay? Dumb. Yeah. You did that? I we're did. Gonna, listen, stop. Just like Sheldon from Big Bang Theory, we're going to renegotiate our friendship contract. <laughs> our roommate agreement. Fun. Yeah, I can't believe you. I, dude, I was the very first, I was the very first trip actually. You would, you, I was, you would. Hey, you would. I, I can sit here and I can say it was a mistake. <laughs> I can teach people from what I have messed up in the past. Like I'm being honest. I did it. I did it. I fucked up. I probably sent that guy 120 to 150,000 over, over the course of time I've known him. Okay. And it's all blown up in my face. Okay. That doesn't have anything to do with the investments. And listen, I'm not shitting on one guy. There's a lot of people that do this. Yeah. Okay? It's pretty common. What? Pretty common. common. Pretty common. It's very common. There's pretty agencies common. that do this. So listen, I'm just the, guy, to the guys that you talked about earlier, Mike and all these guys who have successful 
businesses doing this now, they're not out. They're not loud. To your point earlier, they're not. They get close knit, close network referrals in. They're not out. They run ads every once in a while just to stay relevant. Whatever. It's part of the SEO game. Mm -hmm. But it's typically smaller groups of people as the client base, and they're all tight knit. Yeah. How many of these guys just run around crazy claims and just here's the thing. At some point, this will all catch up to them. But before it does, people have to stop working with these guys. People have to be aware of the scams. And I see more and more every day. If we take a downturn, you're going to see more and more of this stuff. It's going to become way more prevalent. All right. So avoid it. There are great people to work with. If it takes you taking an extra week, two or three to get done, then that's what it is. I'll tell you right now, a consultant that I have been going back and forth with for about two years, I haven't pulled the trigger to work with him. He's a great guy. And we're just going through questions and we're making sure that everything is outlined, what I need and what he's delivering. There hasn't been pressure. If there was pressure and and I didn't feel like my best interests were being served, I'd leave. But because there's not, and because I know he's actually taking the time to under get the understanding of what I need done and to see if he can do that means something, right? Work with people that want to work with you, but work with the people that have the best intent. Even if you listen to this two or three times, you went through all the steps, you could still make that mistake at the end. Say, hey, it's only $2,000 a month. It's only $1,000 a month. But the reality is that's where you start and who knows what they sell you into. Right. So just work with the right people. I'll tell you what, Hermosi has been great. I went to his workshop. That's where I got the idea for the foundation workshop. And her, he kills it, dude. He over delivers on everything he does. I don't have any problem dropping money to go work with him. None. Ed and Andy, anything that they've ever done, I've tried to go to. Why? Because I know I get results. I get to meet great people. And they are teaching the things that have allowed me to grow my business. Right. Yep. And and even these suspect groups are good for certain people. Yes. That's the reality. And I've told many people to stay in certain groups that I left because it fits what they still need. They still get value from it. Well, we're giving you all the shit that we've dealt with. There's also the other side to it. Yeah. If you're a small business looking to accelerate your growth pattern, these groups are great. Just understand what you're paying for and still check the deliverables. The other component is do the fucking work yes. because none of these groups do it for you. And that's, that's a big part, Keith. Yeah, and this is why I don't take a lot of criticism from people. That put a lot of weight in criticizing some of these groups because there are people that go into there and they don't do the work and they just expect it to be done for them. All right. right. So that is one caveat you're hundred percent right on. What I would say is if they are doing the work and they're not getting a result, that's a problem. And how do you measure this, guys? If you're in a group right now and you're on the fence, right? if you're even thinking you're on the fence, then you should probably just fucking leave. You can always come back at a different time. But the other thing I would say is whatever it's costing you a month or overall, has what they taught you or any of the introductions that they have made covered the upfront cost? Now, what about the time that you have to invest with this coach or consultant? All right. So for me, the monetary thing is big. What's more important, how much time do I have to spend with them to get that result? Because the time I can't get back and my time is very valuable. Okay. And I can't spend it working on things that aren't going to work or aren't going to produce a result. So what is the time cost of this? And is there a positive ROI overall? If someone is charging a thousand dollars a month for consulting, and what they've taught you is bringing in 10000 a month additional. Well, guess what? I'm going to pay that guy $1,000 every month until the 10000 doesn't come in anymore, right? Is it working for you like that? Right. And if it's not, then it's not. And by the way, what are their core values? How do they stand, stick to them? Do they even have core values? And what are the principles that are guiding them and their team? Okay, and just talking about core values <coughs> means nothing. <laughs> means nothing. 
If they don't practice them, it means absolutely nothing. You stop. You might get sued, dog. <laughs> what? I'm just fucking with you. What part? The core values thing? Oh, no, I love you. Keep going. Let's keep I'm going. Sue me. Guess what? You have that bigger <laughs> pockets than me to win that. I, that motherfucker does it right now. All right? No, no, for sure. I hope somebody sends this to him. Yeah. Uh, anyway. That's funny. So, Guys, if you ever want to piss off somebody from Boston that's two and a half feet tall, talk well, about people getting fucked over. <laughs> here's the thing, dude. When people, that bothers me on a cellular level. It does, dude, but it's the prey fucking, it happens. There's victims out there. There's an ass for every seat. Yeah. I don't condone it, but at the same time, if you're a fucking paying adult and you don't know what, like, to check references, then there's not a whole lot of hope, which gives those losers hope that they can still make money. Yeah. But, but the reality is, you just got to trust your gut, if nothing else. Holy shit. Yeah. Most of the time, people's guts are like, this is a fucked up group. Yeah. That, that's reality. And to the other reason that this is important is, is to the point of the, the economy being shit is when all these scumbags go to become coaches. Right. Yeah. They've gotten laid off. They're turning their business failed. So now they're a coach and they'll create a story. I so exited a seven figure company. Yeah. Well, so we lost a lot of businesses over the last couple, let's say one to two years. Right. So I've seen it. It's normal, unfortunately, with the economy. But a coach or consultant that tells you that they're good to go see the exit, right? You could probably have them get proof. At least he could actually show you that he exited it. And if he can't show you that, then it's a no-go. Keith. All right, guys, we appreciate you for tuning in and we will catch you on the next one.